cleansing by the blood of Jesus. We ask you, Holy Spirit, reside in our hearts. Still us, quiet us. Let the mercies of God flow into our lives so that we may understand and then we may know and we may live according to His Word. Ama naming Diyos, lumalapit po kami. Kinikilalang, liba na lang kayo ang magpakilala sa amin, di namin kayo kayang abutin. Di namin kayang unawain ang hiwaga na iyong salita. But say the word, O God, and we will be free. Free to know you, to see you, to hear you, to be like your son, Jesus. Hinihiling namin, Panginoon, kayo po ang magsalita sa amin ngayon. We hunger for your word. We thirst for your righteousness. Lukuban niyo po kami ng Espiritu niyo, Panginoon. Mangusap po kayong may kapangyarihan. Mga salitang makapagpapalaya. Mga salitang makapagpapalakas. Mga salita, Panginoon, na makapagpapabago sa amin. Sit on your throne of power. Lead your people unto greater godliness. Be our speaker, O Father. Speak to us. We seek you confidently in Jesus' mighty name. God is all-powerful, and it's a very important reality, especially in the life of God's children. Let's take a look at some of the aspects of God's power. First of all, the extent of God's power. Hanggang saan ba ang naaabot? Ano ba ang nararating, nalulusong, naaahon, napaliligiran ng kapangyarihan ng Diyos? John 13, verse 3. Jesus knew that all the Father had put all things under His power. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under His power. All. All things are under the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. So what are the various facets of life to which the power of God has great influence? To which God has power and over which God has power? God has power over all creation. Lahat-lahat ng nilikhang bagay na sa ilalim ng kapangyarihan ng Diyos. John 1.3 Through Him all things were made. Without Him, nothing was made that has been made. Everything was made through Jesus. Through Him, there was nothing that was made that was not made in His name. So He has power over all of creation. And God has power over all life. All of life and every aspect, every detail of life. To the point that Matthew 10, 29-30 says, Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet, not one of them will fall to the ground apart from the will of your Father. And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Bihirang ginagamit yung noun na plural pag hair. Hairs. Every grammar teacher will tell you, hair dapat yan. And they say, dahil hindi nabibilang. Pero sinabi sa Bible, hairs kasi bilang ng Diyos. Ganun ang kanyang kapangyarihan. Hanggang sa kalit-liit ang detalye. Na walang ibon na nalalaglag sa lupa mula sa himpapawid, liba na lang payagan niya na malaglag ito. Lalo namang walang nakalilipad, liba na lang na payagan niya. God has power over all life. And God has power over all configurations, over all formula, over all combinations, over all systems, over all secret knowledge. Colossians 1.17 He is before all things, and in Him all things hold together. The word before there, not necessarily referring to time, but ibig sabihin, above all, preeminent. That He is above all things and that in Him all things hold together. Pag iniisip natin what holds a country together, is it its armed forces or self-restraint? What holds a family together? The mother, the father, the combination of both? What holds a company together? The administrator, the policies, the security guards? What holds the atom together? What holds atomic power together? What holds all things together? We know who. That is God. He is before all things. And in Him, all things hold together. 
pati yung pag-isolate ng mga atomic power, pagtatanggal-tanggal ng mga configuration at pagsasama-sama, mga chemical composition, all things hold together in God. And it is God that holds things all together. Napakalalim ng verse na yan. Pag iniisip natin how much energy is used to split the atom and how much energy is released by splitting it, even that is held together by the power of God. The power of God also is over all processes and over all possibilities. Mark 10.27 Jesus looked at them and said, With man, this is impossible. But not with God. All things are possible with God. Church, will you read that aloud? Louder. And let that be a statement of your faith. That all things, not 99.99 of things, but all things are possible with God. Siya ang gumagawa ng mga proseso. He can make and unmake them. He makes the rules and He can unmake the rules. All things are possible with God. Also, God's power is over history and human affairs. That God is actively participating in the making and the unmaking of human history. Daniel chapter 2, verse 21. He sets up kings and deposes them. Ang Diyos ang naglalagay ng mga nangunguna, ng mga hari, at siya rin ang nagtatanggal. With God, nothing is impossible. Daniel 4.35 All the peoples of the earth are regarded as nothing. He does as He pleases with the powers of heaven and the peoples of the earth. No one can hold back His hand or say to Him, What have you done? God is all-powerful. That though we have free will, God has control over the destiny of the world. That God is in control over the unfolding of human history. What else? To what else does God's power extend? God's power extends over principalities and over all powers. Colossians 1.16 For by Him... All things were created. Things in heaven and on earth. Visible and invisible. Whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. All things were created by Him and for Him. Referring to the Lord Jesus Christ. So, God's power creates all things. Hebrews 1 verse 3. The sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of His being. Sustaining all things by His powerful Word. God's power sustains all things. By the power of what, church? His Word. The Word of God is powerful. Like a two-edged sword that can cut through all kinds of difficulties. That it can separate bone from the marrow. God's Word is powerful. Those who know God's Word, those who live by God's Word, and those who use God's Word are empowered by God Himself. Ephesians 1.22 And God placed all things under His feet and appointed Him to be head over everything for the church. And 1 Corinthians 3.21 All things are yours. So what else is God's power for? God's power owns all things. Ang kapangyarihan ng Diyos ang may-ari, nagmamay-ari ng lahat-lahat ng bagay. Lahat ng talent, lahat ng treasure, lahat ng energy, lahat ng creativity, lahat-lahat ng bagay. That's why Christians have to repossess the earth. Napakalami na ng parts of our life Geographical, sociological, social, moral, na naisuko na ng mga anak ng Diyos sa sanlibutan na para bang si Satanas na ang may-ari ng mundo. Na para bang sila ang mag dito. Na para bang kanila na ang tugtog, ang sayaw, kanila na ang gabi at ang araw, kanila na ang maraming lugar. 
But everything is God's. And everything belongs to God. That's why the people of God must rise and repossess the earth. Every part and everything in it belongs to God. And we are God's people. We inherit what belongs to our Father. Colossians 2.15 And having disarmed the powers and authorities, He made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. God's power disarms powers. Kumisan yung mga kapangyarihan na may armas, may sandata, may lakas. Akala natin nakakatakot. Masasamang tao, masasamang espiritu, akala natin sila na ang makakapangyari. But what does scripture say? That God disarms powers and authorities. Ang tanggalan ng Diyos ng kapangyarihan ay nawawala ng kapangyarihan. Ang agawan niya tanggalan ng armas ay nawawala ng ganitong mga sandata. God's power disarms all powers, even the power of the evil one. 1 Peter 3.22 And who has gone into heaven and is at God's right hand with angels, authorities, and powers in submission to Him, referring to the Lord Jesus Christ. God's power subdues all powers. Walang lakas, walang kapangyarihan na pwedeng manindigan laban sa kapangyarihan ng Panginoong Jesus. Isaiah 24, 21 In that day, the Lord will punish the powers in the heavens above and the kings on the earth below. God's power punishes all other powers that go against Him or have gone against Him. On and on and on, church, we can go through a litany of the extent of God's power. Pwede nating isa-isahin, himay-himayin ang lahat ng mararating, lahat ng nasasakop ng kapangyarihan ng Diyos. Subalit, bakit dapat gawin? At bakit ginawa natin? Because God's power is meant to empower us. It is not an outside force just to look at, just to appreciate, but it is a force that should be used by the people of God. What can happen because of God's power? Because of God's power, God's people should flow with God's will. God's people should obey God. God's people should make themselves channels and implementers of God's will. Makapangyarihan ng Diyos. Siya ang nasusunod. Siya ang maguhusga. At dahil sa katotohanan na yan, dapat ang mga anak ng Diyos maging daluyan ng kapangyarihan ng Diyos patungo sa buong sangkatauhan. The power of God in heaven must be channeled through the people of God so that that power may be incarnated in the lives of people on earth. Na yung kalooban ng Diyos sa langit mangyari sa lupa, na yung gusto niya na ideya maging practical deed, yung hangarin maging kilos, yung abstract maging real, yung espiritu maging katawan. At sino ang dadaanan nun? Sino ang channel? Sino ang kasangkapan? Ang mga anak ng Diyos. Matthew 6.10 Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. As above, so below. As it is in heaven, let it be on earth. Kung ang Panginoon po'y mabuti at matulungin, paano mangyayari yan sa lupa kung ang kanyang mga anak ay nagiging mabuti at matulungin? Ko ang Diyos ay may mga nais ibigin at tulungan, paano magiging totoo ko ang mga anak ng Diyos ay umiibig at tumutulong sa nais tulungan ng Diyos? Ko ang Panginoon ay mapayapa at gusto niya ng kapayapaan, paano nangyayari yun? Ko ang mga anak ng Diyos ay nagiging dahilan para maging mapayapa ang pamumuhay? Kung ang Diyos ay may nais yakapin, sagipin, hanguin sa hirap, paano mangyayari yon? Pagka ang mga anak ng Diyos ay ginamit ang kanilang mga bisig, ang kanilang lakas, ang kanilang alam para hanguin, sagipin ang mga nangangailangan. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. As above, so below. Idea, reality. Ideal, practical application. 
saan magaganap through the Christian. That where there is fear, there may be security. Where there is hatred, there may be love. Where there is enmity, there may be friendship. Where there is want, there may be plenty. How will all these things happen? Papano lilipat lahat ang mabubuting bagay mula sa spiritual realm, heavenly realms, para lumipat dito sa world sa pamamagitan ng mga Kristiyano. We are instruments of God's power so that all the ideals could be turned into practical day-to-day reality. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 21. If a man cleanses himself, he will be an instrument for noble purposes, made holy, useful to the master, and prepared to do any good work. Pag daw ang tao ay nililinis ang kanyang sarili sa pamamagitan ng dugo ni Kristo at pananampalataya sa Panginoon, siya ay magiging kasangkapan para sa mga dakila at mga mahahalagang paraan. Siya ay magiging kasangkapan ng Diyos. Sa pamamagitan ng kanyang kamay, ang Diyos ay may tutulungan, aakayin, aarugain. Sa pamamagitan ng kanyang paa, ang Diyos ay may mga pupuntahang mga lugar. Sa pamamagitan ng kanyang bibig, ang Diyos ay magsasalita. If a man cleanses himself, he will be an instrument for noble purposes. But the devil likes the opposite. The devil likes us to make ourselves dirty, to stain ourselves with worldliness and selfishness and immorality. So we may be disqualified from becoming an instrument of God and may be exploited to become instruments of the devil. Tanong, sino po ang pinaglilingkuran ng ating katawan? Sino ang pinaglilingkuran ng ating isip, ng ating mga kapangyarihan, mumunting kapangyarihan ibinagay sa atin ng Diyos, mumunting mga kayamanan, mumunting influensya, kanino natin isinusuko, kanino tayo naglilingkod. Ang Diyos ay pumipili ng mga tao para maging kasangkapan niya. Kung meron siyang gustong tulungan, hindi naman bumababa yung Diyos mula sa langit at personally gumagawa ng appearance para tumulong sa tutulungan niya. Kung meron siyang gustong turuan, hindi naman niya bingang may bullhorn from heaven at tinuturuan niya yung mga tao. Pag meron siyang gustong akayin, hindi naman niya pupuntahan physically aakayin. Anong ginagawa niya? Pumipili siya ng mga tao. Mga babae at lalaki, matandaman o bata, na gagawin niyang kasangkapan. Ang tanong, kayo po ba ay available to be channels of God's blessings? Kung minsan yung mga wires, iba-iba ng size, electrical wires, merong makakapal, merong maliliit, maninipis, depende sa size nyo, yun lang ang pwedeng voltahe na dumaan. Dapat pinapalaki natin lagi. Para kahit anong voltahe ang gustong padaanin ni Lord na blessing, through us, pwede. Si Paul, napili niya pong instrument. Marami! At hanggang ngayon ang Diyos ay pumipilit tumatawag ng mga instrumento. Kaya nga nung si Paul ay tinawag niya para maglingkod, sapagat itong si Paul merong very bad record, kalaban niya ng mga anak ng Diyos because he was a leader of the temple and he was arresting Christians, sending them to death. At nung merong isang Kristiyano, si Ananias, na sinabi ni Lord, puntahan mo si Paul, dampian mo nang iyong kamay at ipanalangin mo. Ay Lord, wag naman, di ba kriminal yan, baka mahuli pa niyan ako. Tumatanggi si Ananias. Anong sabi ng Panginoon sa Acts chapter 9, verse 15? But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to carry my name before the Gentiles and their kings and before the people of Israel. Pinili, tinawag para gamitin ng Panginoon. At hindi tumigil ang pagtawag ng Panginoon kay Paul at sa kanyang panahon. Hanggang ngayon, tinatawag niya tayong maglingkod. But are we allowing ourselves to be the channel, to be the wire, to be the pipe through which the blessings of God will become real in people's lives. Christian, know God's will. Know the Bible. Know God's general plan and seek God's personal will for you. It's important to operate within God's plans. In everything you do, put God first and He will guide you and crown your efforts with success. 
Lahat ng ating pagsisikap, pagkilos, kung ito ay hindi ayon sa kalooban ng Diyos. And worse, kung labag pa at salungat sa kalooban ng Diyos, will not prosper. Nagsasayang tayo ng panahon, ng lakas ng ating buhay. Ano pa ang implication ng God power? Because of God power, God's people can depend on God. Pwedeng asahan ang Diyos. Kung umaasa kayo sa hindi pwedeng asahan, lugi kayo. But because God is powerful, you can depend on God. Sometimes yung mga personality sa kailangan ng gwardya, pag may malalaking mga katawan, marunong ng mga martial arts at gumamit ng mga sandata, you feel secure pag nandun yung tao. Kung medyo insecure ka sa buhay, gusto mo mataas na gate, mataas na bakod, may mga alarm-alarm systems ang iyong mga pinto, sa so mo ay naaasahan yan kasi dependable. Pero gano kalalo na pwede tayong umasa sa Diyos? Because God is not only powerful, but God loves us. Yung pag-ibig niya, so He is willing. Yung kapangyarihan niya, so He is able. God is willing and able to protect us. To lift us up, God can be depended on. Because of that, God's people can not only depend on God, but also God's people can let go. 1 Peter 5.7 Cast all your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. Pag alam mong mahal ka ng isang tao, pwedeng-pwede kang umasa sa Kanya. Cast your anxiety on Him. Ibigay mo sa Kanya. Itapon mo sa Kanya. I have told you about this story and let me tell you again na mayroong isang bata na mayroong nasusunog yung kanilang bahay. He was on the ledge of the second floor building and there were people on the ground below saying, talon ka, talon ka dahil nasusunog na yung bahay. Sasaluhin ka namin. May mga malalaking katawan na sinabi, sasaluhin ka namin. Tapos mayroon naman isa medyo medium built lang pero dun sa kanya lumundag yung bata. Tinanggihan yung ang lalaking mga katawan at mga magagaling at uh, parang very dependable. And you know why? Dahil yung medium-sized man na yun, tatay niya. Doon ako sa tatay ko kahit payat. Kesa naman dito sa ang laking katawan eh, malay mo magbago isip, hindi ako saluhin. And our Father in Heaven is powerful. He doesn't only love us, He is also powerful. Kaya pwede tayong umasa. We can let go. We can cast our anxieties on Him. Because He cares. And He not only cares, He is powerful. Kumisan we care, but we are powerless. Wala rin tayong magawa. Kumisan man we are powerful, but we don't care. So wala rin tayong gagawin. But God is willing and able to catch us, to love us. Because God is powerful, God, God's people can rest. We can rest. Matthew 11:28. Come to me. All of you who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. Di ba yan ang kailangan natin? Nang ating mga pusong pagod, sawang-sawa nang ma-inlove, sawang-sawa nang mapagtaksilan, sawang-sawa nat pagod na pagod na sa pagsisikap, pagod na pagod na tayo sa intriga, sa mga masasamang salita ng kapwa, sa mga kabiguan, sawang-sawa na tayong matakot. Sawang-sawa na tayo mga mba, umasa sa wala. Sabi ni Lord, come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Napakagandang pangako. Kailangan nating lahat. Because God is powerful, we can depend on Him, we can let go, and we can rest. And because God is powerful, we can be secure. Ang pinakamalaking epidemic sa mundo ay hindi common cold, hindi chicken pox, insecurity. Yan ang pinakamalaking sakit ng sangkatauhan, insecurity. We don't feel secure enough. People who come from broken homes, insecure. Yun din namang buo yung home, tas wala na ang kapera-pera, meron din insecurity. People are so insecure about how they look, kaya nga napakalaking industriya ang cosmetology and cosmetic surgery. People are so insecure about their talent and their knowledge. So marami mga tutorial kung ano-ano. People are so insecure about so many things na industriya din yung surveillance and security. Napakarami nating insecurities. 
But because God is powerful, we can be secure. Proverbs 18.10 The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. Napakaganda yan, church. Let's read it together. The righteous run to it and are safe. The name of the Lord. Name pa lang. But you know what name is? It is everything. The name is the character, the personality, the essence, the aspiration of a person. And the name of God is a strong tower. That's why we live according to the name of God. And His name is holy. And His name is wonderful. Kaya kailangan nyo ng ating pamumuhay. We can be secure. Nung araw, yung tower kasi eh, magandang uh, puntahan. In ancient times, up to the medieval ages, the only security of a people would be the tower of their city. Bakit? Mataas yun, malayo pa lang nakikita yung kaaway. At maraming nakaimbak na pagkain, inumin dun sa tower. Kumisan underground, may mga water systems patungo dun sa ilalim ng tower. Para kung merong gera, nung araw kasi ang gera, ang pagpapalit ng mga pinuno, hindi lang apat na araw eh. Kumisan apat na buwan, anim na buwan, dalawang taon, pinaliligiran ng kalaban ng isang syudad. At kung hindi man nila maakyat yung mga pader, hindi man nila malusob yung nasa loob, paliligiran nila hanggang maubos ang pagkain, hanggang manghina at sumuko. Patagalan. Kaya ang mga tao, pag mayroong mga kaaway na dumarating, what does everyone do? They run to the tower. Dahil doon, secure sila sa loob, sa ibabaw, mayroong mga namamana, nagbubuso mga kumukulong tubig at mga apoy-apoy sa mga lumalapit, tapos may pagkain sila sa loob, kaya sabi nila, itong tower ang ating safety. Kaya sinabi dito, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. And what's so nice about this tower is that when the enemy comes, you don't need to run to the tower. Kumisang kasi nung araw, yung mga pesans, aabutan sila ng invasion. Eh, ang layo nung town, tatakbo pa sila ng napakahabang takbo bago nila marating yung tower. But God, our tower, is only a prayer away. Ang lapit ng Panginoon. Hindi dapat ma-insecure ang mga Christians because God is only a whisper away. The tower is instantly available to those who seek God. Because we can be secure, then we can also have peace. John 14.27 Peace I leave with you. The Lord speaking here. My peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not be afraid. How does the world give? Magbayad ka muna para kita bigyan. Scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. O kaya, bigay bawe. Di ba maraming nagbabalimbing? Pag nag-change of power, nagpapalitan din ng mga loyalties. Bibigay ko yung loyalty ko, pero mamaya babawiin ko na. Bigay bawe. Sabi ni Lord, I do not give as the world gives. Pag binigay ko inyo na, wala nang bawian. Pag binigay ko, hindi nyo na kailangan bayaran. Ako pa nga ang nagbayad sa cross para ko lang kayo bigyan. Napakasarap ng pag-ibig ng Diyos. We can be secure and we can have peace. Christians, the best thing in life next to salvation is peace. Yung payapa ka, kahit kumakain ka lamang ng recycled ulam, kahit nakahiga ka lang sa isang kabang bigas, kahit nakasandal ka lang sa kung ano, nakakatulog ka. Kahit ang kinakain mo lamang eh kung ano, masarap. Kasi merong peace. It is peace that makes food taste great. It is peace that makes sleeping sweet and nice. It is peace that makes you enjoy the sunshine or the sunset. It is peace and only peace that can enable you to sit, enjoy the wind, and read a book. Because without peace, you cannot enjoy anything. Kahit kami pinapanood na pelikula, wala doon ang iyong isip. Kahit kami pinapakinggang musika, wala doon ang iyong tenga. Kahit may kinakain ka, wala doon ang iyong panlasa. At kahit mahiga ka sa pinakamagandang higaan, wala doon ang iyong kapahingahan. It is only God who gives it. And God says, I like to give it to you. And I do not give as the world gives. Ephesians 2.14 
For He, the Lord, He Himself is our peace. Our peace with God. May peace offering na yung ating mga kasalanan. He is our peace. As against war, because of Jesus, we have peace with God. And Jesus continues to give peace. God is powerful. All powerful. Omnipotent. Christian, you have no reason and you have no right to feel insecure. Because God, our God, is powerful. And this powerful God loves you. That He sent His Son Jesus to die for you. To continue to uphold you and to sustain you. Kung tayo yung nabubuhay sa takot, sa insecurity, sa fear, siguro malayo ang ating loob sa Diyos. At dahil malayo ang ating loob, nasisingitan tayo ng kaaway, nadadaya tayo, nabubulungan tayo ng mga bagay na nakakatakot. Nakakatakot naman ang economy, nakakatakot naman ang buhay, nakakatakot ang ating kapitbahay, nakakatakot ang bulkan, nakakatakot ang lindol, nakakatakot ang apoy. Pag inisip niyo lahat ng nakakatakot, wag na kayong lumayo dahil kayo rin nakakatakot. Di ba? Marami mga tao eh, nagpapakamatay, pinapatay ang sarili. Nakakatakot din natin sarili. You don't need to go far. Many people self-destruct. They don't need people to destroy them. They do it themselves. But with God, nothing is impossible. Huwag kayong natatakot sa future. You don't know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. It is God. Hawak ng Diyos ang darating pa. Yung iba takot na takot lagi. May mga projections sa year 2010, 2017. Hindi naman masamang may general plan, but you can be obsessed with such a plan. But are you sure that you will live long enough to even implement the plan? Sabi niya, today, your soul is extracted of you. Do not boast about tomorrow. You do not know what the day may bring forth. It's good to be ready, but it's better to trust God. Trusting God doesn't mean throwing your caution and your intelligence in the wind. Ginagawa natin the best that we can and then we leave the rest to God. Nagtitiwala tayo sa Kanya. Na siya na hindi nagpabaya, kinailangang ibuka ang dagat para tumawid ang mga anak niyang Israelites ay pinabuka ang dagat. Siya na nagbibigay ng pillar of fire by night to give them warmth and light and a cloud by day to give them shelter from the sun and to air condition the desert. He na nagpaula ng mana for 40 years to feed a hungry multitude. He who sent His Son Jesus to die in our place is the same God who loves us today. Huwag niyong payagan na madaya kayo. Ang pinakamasamang magnanakaw ay eh hindi yung nagnanakaw ng kwintas o nagnanakaw ng bahay o nagnanakaw ng asawa. Ang pinakamasamang magnanakaw yung nagnanakaw ng ating kapayapaan. The worst thief is the one who robs you of peace. It is because of peace that Jesus was incarnated so we can have peace with God. And it is because of peace that Jesus charged all our sins to the cross so we don't have to carry the burden of guilt and we don't have to harvest the bitter fruit of eternal damnation. It is because of peace that God said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And it is because of peace that God is only a prayer away. Do not permit the evil one to rob you of God's wonderful gift. And God who gives you is able to sustain you. God is all-powerful. God who is all-powerful loves us. God's power loves and keeps us. Romans 8, 38-39 For I am convinced... Church, let us read this aloud together. Romans 8, 38 to 39. At the top of your voice. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Palakpakan natin ang Panginoon. Himay-himayin natin yung verse. Neither death, 
nor life. Sa mabuhay at sa mamatay, nasa Diyos pa rin tayo. So ba't ka matatakot mamatay? Ba't ka rin matatakot mabuhay? So sabi ng iba, nakakatakot namang mamatay, mas mahal kesa mabuhay. Sabi, neither death nor life. Kaya sabi ni Paul, for me, to live is Christ, to die is gain. Kaya dito, kaya doon, saan ako mapunta? Diyos nandun pa rin, I will not be shaken. Neither death nor life. Ano pa? Neither angels nor demons. Yung iba naman, natatakot sa demons. Hindi naman nakakatakot ang mga demons eh. Huwag kayong matakot sa demons. Ang asikasuhin nyo, matakot kayo sa Diyos. At kung meron tayong banal na pagkatakot sa Diyos, to the point that we fear God, to the point of obeying Him and living according to His words, you have nothing and no one to fear because all the demons are under the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> ang totoo ay mas madali pang ang kausap yung mga demonyo kesa sa mga tao. Kahit masasamang espiritu, utusan mo. Sa pangalan ng Panginoon, humalis ka dyan, umaalis. Meron ba ang kulit? Pinaaalis mo na. Ayaw po umalis na tao. Huwag kayong matatakot sa demons. Ang asikasuhin ninyo, live by the grace and the power of God and you have nothing to fear. Sabi niya, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future. Ba't kayong matatakot sa future? Nakarating na doon ang Diyos. Alam niyang ginagawa niya. God has been to the future. Sa God, walang past, walang future. Everything is an ongoing present. And God holds everything in His hands. Neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth. Yung iba pa, meron pang aerophobia. Pag nasa mataas ang building, natatakot. Nandun din ang Diyos. Yung iba naman, may claustrophobia. Pag sumuot na sa ilalim, mga mina-mina, natatakot. Nandun din ang Diyos. Neither height nor depth. Yung marami mga phobia, memorize niyo itong Romans 8, 38 to 39 at lagi niyo sabihin, neither height nor depth or anything else in our creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's how secure we are as a people of God. Huwag niyong garyahin si Lino sa Peanuts cartoon na pag wala na yung tuwalya niya, eh, insecure na. Yung iba, hindi mabubuhay ng walang patis. Ang babaw naman. <laughs> yung hindi ako mabubuhay ng walang asawa, if you leave me now, um, I will die. Sika, sinungalingan yun. Ipinanganak kayo, hindi naman kasama yan, eh, ba't kayo mamamatay pag nawala? Namit nyo lang nung kayo 18, 19, o 29, ang tagal-tagal yung nabuhay ng wala yan, tapos hindi na kayo mabubuhay pag nawala. It's a lie. Sabihin nyo nga, it's a lie. It's a lie. Yes. Mahalin nyo yung asawa nyo, mahalin nyo yung anak nyo, mahalin nyo yung magulang nyo. Pero kung kinuha ng Panginoon, ibigay nyo ng maluwag at huwag na kayong maghabol-habol dahil baka nga ihabol kayo agad. <laughs> kung naka, nagkaroon kayo ng kabiyak, nagkaroon kayo ng mahal sa buhay, ipinahiram ni Lord sa inyo ng sandali, ng ilang panahon, ng ilang taon, o 20 years, o 30 years, lumigaya kayo. Pag kinuha, ang unahin nyo mga kapatid, magpasalamat kayo, nakahiram kayo kahit 30 years. Yung iba, namatay na ng lahat-lahat, wala pa rin nahiram. Kayo, nakahiram. Tapos yung iba pa, Lord, bakit? Ba't mo binawi? Yan naman ang mahiram sa nanghihiram. Ayaw na magsuli. Ang lahat ay pahiram. Pag binawi ng Diyos, do not be bitter, but be thankful that you have enjoyed. Kahit man lang sandali. Let go. God is in control. Huwag tayong laging natatakot. You know, ang mahirap magmahal, pag nagmahal ka na, takot na takot ka ngayong mawala ang iyong minamahal. Ang katakutan natin ay mawala ang pabor ng Diyos atin. Yun ang katakutan natin. Mahalin natin ang kapwa, give the best, pero huwag siyang gagawing Diyos o Diyos Diyos sa ng ating buhay. Mga asawa, gawin nyo lang yung number two. Dapat ang number one ang Diyos. Pag ginawa niyong number one yan, pagka nawala, talaga naman. Ilang buwan na hinahanap niyo pa si Crispin at Basilio. <laughs> Mahalin niyo, pero lagyan ng hangganan din sapagkat ang Diyos, siya ang number one sa ating buhay. Kung may sasabihin niyo, ang dalin sabihin niyan, mahirap gawin. Totoo. Lalo't malayo ang ating puso sa Diyos. 
Do not place anybody above God. Siya ang una. Matagal kong inisip-isip, bakit ba naman gusto ng Diyos lagi siyang una? Siya ba'y masyadong narcissistic? Masyado ba siyang self-centered? But the Lord has revealed that to me. Gusto niyang una. Kasi kung sino yung una, yun ang sobrang makakaapekto sa atin. At kung Diyos ang una, mga tao, mga bagay, pangalawa, pangatlo lang, dumating man sila o umalis, we don't lose our center, we don't lose our bearings, because God will never leave us, God will never forsake us. Eh, tao, inuna ninyo, tapos bigla kayong iniwan, eh, di napakasaklap. O ayaw man kayong iwan, eh, binawian ang buhay, eh, di masaklap pa rin. Protect yourself from too much harm. Put God first. He wants to be number one because He knows that He will never leave us and He likes to take care of us. Pag may binawi ang Diyos, magpasalamat at nakahiram. Our security is not the absence of danger, but the presence of God. Kahit tayo naliligid ng napakaraming panganib, pag ang Panginoon nasa ating puso, you are secure. Pero kahit isuot nyo ay armor at ang sasakyan ninyo ay personal carrier, hindi pa rin kayo sa sarili ninyo mismo. Put God first. Put God first. And you will have peace in your life. Let's bow before the Lord. We will pray. We will pray. Sino man sa atin, ang nakakaramdam na dinadaya kayo ng kaaway. Kakaroon kayo ng fear. Fear for your health. Fear for the length of your life. Fear for provisions. Fear for this and fear for that. The Lord likes you to be delivered. Fear has no place in the hearts of the children of God. Sabi niya, fear not. Today, we're going to surrender to the Lord our fears. And we will ask Him to replace those fears with peace, with serenity. Whoever has any fear that robs you of happiness, of joy, of peace, I'd like you to stand. We're going to pray. Tell God, Lord, I need you. I have fears. Yung mga kinatatakutan ako, Panginoon. Before we all pray collectively, I like you to seek God's forgiveness. Because to fear is to sin against God. Pag natatakot tayo, ibig sabihin, meron tayong mas pinansin na kapangyarihan higit sa kapangyarihan ng Diyos. Pag may kinatakutan tayo, ibig sabihin, doon tayo tumingin, hindi doon sa grasya ng Diyos. Pag may kinatakutan tayo, ibig sabihin, tumalikod tayo sa Diyos. Natakot tuloy tayo. Repent. Seek God's forgiveness. Humingi ng tawad na mas binigyan nyo ng pansin yung nakakatakot kesa sa Diyos mismo na lumikha kayo ng mga diyos sa buhay, natakot tuloy. Ask for God's forgiveness. Ama naming Diyos, kayo na nakababatid ng laman na aming puso sa paghingi ng tawad ng mga anak mo. Kayo itapat sa inyong pangako. Sabi sa inyong salita, 1 John 1.9 you are faithful and just and will forgive us when we confess our sins. We declare our sinfulness before you. Kinikilala namin pinagsisisihan, Panginoon, na higit sa inyo, meron kami mga naging diyos Ang aming mga pangamba, ang aming mga hangarin, patawarin niyo po kami. Linisin kami. Panginoon, sa paggawad niyo po ng inyong paglilinis at pagpapatawad, hinihingi ko po, alang-alang sa inyong mga pangako. Alisin mo, Panginoon, ang mga takot sa puso ng bawat isa. 
Take away our fears, O Father. Wash our hearts with the blood of Jesus. And we declare ourselves your people, your church, your protectorate, your nation. We hide in the shadow of your love. We seek refuge in your tower. You are our strong tower. And we reject your work, evil one, in our midst. In the name of Jesus, we cross, destroy, and trample upon the work of evil in our lives. And we seek deliverance by the blood of Jesus. Lord, ibigay niyo po yung peace. Alisin mo mga takot sa mga sakit. Mga takot sa finances or lack of it. Takot sa kapwa-tao. Takot sa mga espiritu. Takot sa kung ano-anong mga bagay. Takot sa discomfort. Takot sa poverty. Panginoon, deliver your people. Visit us powerfully. Rest in us. And may we never forget, O oh God, that you who made heaven and earth, who rule the universe, is our friend. You are our friend. You are our God. You are our Savior. And we place ourselves, O Father, under your jurisdiction, under your protection, in your tower of refuge. Panginoon naming Diyos, maluwalati kayo. At sa pagpapalaya niyo sa amin mula sa iba't ibang mga takot, ang kapayapaan nawa namin, hindi lang ma-enjoy namin mag kundi maging daan para kami maging mga kasangkapan mo sa pagpapalaya rin ng iba. That where we go, there may be peace. Where we intercede, there may be peace. Where we speak, peace may be promoted. Where we visit, peace will follow and reign supreme. Lord, we thank you for peace. We thank you, Lord, that we can enjoy little moments and big moments. That we can enjoy great and small victories. That we can still be serene in spite of our failures and shortcomings. That we can be serene in the midst of all the turmoil around us. Because you are our shelter. You are our banner. You are our champion. You are our Savior. You are our God. And your power is available to us. Thank you, Lord, that you are almighty. Thank you that you are powerful. And thank you that you love us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Praise you, Lord. Thank you.